why we've had this car a total of two days, and uh, I have to work on it. It almost left us stranded at Walmart yesterday. It's got a leaky oil seal in the back of it. See right here. Here's a pump that I replaced before I before I knew that we were going to be borrowing this, and then it's a little low on power steering fluid too. So it probably has a little bit of a power steering fluid leak. I'm going to replace some gaskets. We're going to take this thing to a car wash, and we're going to clean it all out, and then we're going to see what else is leaking after I replace all these gaskets. tight that I risk breaking my tool. Nope. One more. Okay. Yeah, a couple of those are probably under two, three hundred pound feet of torque. When they're that tight, you risk actually doing damage to your brakes. Lug nuts only need to be about 75 to 80 foot pounds. I mean, it all varies depending on the manufacturer and the rims that you have on there, but they definitely don't need to be 200. Unless you're on a big rig or something. Look at the size of these beefy bad boys. Look at these guys beefy bad boys. Oh yeah, bad boys I don't like. Ah. These are like a door panel tool for like old school crank windows and stuff like that, but it's like a clip tool. I found these things are just the handiest tools ever for getting these little push pins out. Weeding. I've seen how we use those for weeding. For weeding, really? Weeding, yeah. And you get down in like just the root and then oh, helps you yeah. weed. Nice. Tools that have multiple uses. For the year this is, I'm really impressed that this thing actually has this thing in it. Most of the time, by the time they get to this stage in life, they don't have all their parts anymore. You can see, you can see a little how it's coated everything back here. And that is the metal part that you don't want it leaking in right there on that exhaust. We're going to really go through here and make sure we don't have any other leaks while we're in here too. Just got to get this silly panel out first. Hi, Booger Bean. Yeah, definitely not cut all there. Right in that. I know. <laughs> so, it's still attached. Because it's usually like again, a lot of manufacturers will make these in multiple pieces. So like you can pull this part out and leave this whole end yeah, liner in. But for whatever reason they did not. So like this is the entire inner liner. It goes all the way over here. Oh. So I'd have to pull all of that it's all out. All one piece. Yes. That's ridiculous. Yes. Now I say there's just three bolts holding this whole thing. Want to help us out? Subscribe to our channel. It's totally free and it would really bring us joy. Then click the bell notification so you know when we have a new video up. Thanks. Okay, 
can't really see what I was doing in there. I saw this from the video that we watched, but there's three different sized bolts that it looks like in, that are in there, so you, you just definitely want to pay attention to what bolts are coming out of where. So you won't be able to put it back together otherwise. I got two out of the three loosened. So this bracket right here that this oil filter is on right here, you can see that bottom bolt that's still in, and you can see the two top bolts that I took out. It's pretty simple. As far as like ease of getting to, I was really worried when I first saw this leak yesterday that I was gonna be taking the whole back side of the motor apart to get to whatever the heck was leaking. I was very elated when I researched this yesterday and figured out that it was something much simpler. So I have two shorts and one long. And I just remembered which, the uh, the one long one goes on the inside top hole. If you're curious. Oh, not hard at all. There you go, now you can kind of see the bare block in there. And we got a couple of rags so I can whip that off you can see she's pretty brittle beans. I'll show it to you right you there, right? Yep. Yeah, you can see where all the oil's leaking and the machine metal. Oh, yeah. I didn't unplug one plug, but you don't need that to, to really come out all the way. Let's get some towels and a screw them driver. Okay. Here's the old one. I uh, can't really tell, but it's like very brittle and it's old plastic. It's been there for a while. It actually isn't that as bad as I thought it would be, so this has probably been done at some point in its life. I'm just gonna wipe around that surface area and try and clean it up as best as I can before I put the new one in there. This one also looks like it has new seals for your sensors. I'm gonna take a look at those sensors. If they're not leaking, I'm probably not gonna take them out and replace it. So right away, I can tell you this is exactly the same gasket. This one is just made out of more. You can saw, see how this one's been flattened out, and this one's like kind of rounded. That's what happens when they just flatten out and get old and brittle at the time. We'll lay this in the new house or in the housing and then we'll put the housing back on with the three bolts and it should be ready to go. And then before I put the wheel on and the cover on, what I'll probably do is I'll, uh, I'll check the oil on top of the power steering fluid up. I'm gonna start this thing off and I'm probably gonna crank the wheel both ways and make sure that there's no other leaks on this side. It's all the daisy on these things. Just a little bit of NIC is some sticking. Or daisy sour cream. You can get this stuff in little like uh, one-time use packets from any auto parts store. I usually go through a tub of this a year or so. I shouldn't say that, I've had this for a little bit. Looks like you've had it for a little bit. The thing is, is, a little bit of this goes a long way and you don't want to do this to every single bolt because a lot of bolts you don't want to just come loose anytime. You know, some, some bolts you put uh, Loctite on so that they stick in there extra tight. Probably be a lot of people that would disagree that I shouldn't put NICs on these. But again, this is uh, going into an aluminum block and these are not aluminum bolts. So we're tying those two metals and fuse together and, and make it a real pain in the butt to get this apart. And if you were to break a bolt off in there, like if I was to take this apart and break a bolt off in there, I'd be really sad. So I'm gonna think of the next guy. Where are you? So I'm starting on this little bottom bolt here. And basically, I just want to get it I don't want to get it tight, I just want to get it started. And I only have the one bolt left up on the top right here. Just pay attention to how it comes apart, you should be okay. There's also probably a torque specification on this, which means that there's a certain way that you should tighten it. I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm just gonna rely on my calibrated elbow. But the idea is you don't want to over torque one side and then under torque the other. You want it all to be relatively the equal amount of tightness so that you don't have any looseness against the metal surfaces which would cause a leak. Okay, that should be the repair. We'll uh, check the oil, top off the power steering fluid while we're at it, and if we need to top off the oil, we'll do that too. We'll start it up and we'll see if we got any leaks over here. We are a little low, so top that off before we fire it up. Remember how easy it is to put oil on this thing? So easy. Dear Walmart, stop this. It's so hard to get these things off, the little pieces will fall in here while. Yeah, and these yesterday, I got two of them all the way back to check out, and one of them was leaking, even with these seals. And now look, there's this plastic that can just fall down in your oil. Look how it just, it's just tearing and breaking off in a little tiny pieces. This is not good for anyone's engine. First and last time I ever buy Walmart cheap oil. Stay away from this stuff, it's garbage. And I put it into the car. It's got an oil leak. If it, if it stops leaking oil, I'll put good oil into it. I was about to buy something double that price. Well, I bought uh, power steering fluid for it, and a quarter of it cost me 18 freaking dollars. I mean, we're right at the, like, just underneath the mark, so when I let it down, that'll be a full, full, full thing. 
with oil. Now we're gonna top off the power steering fluid with not antifreeze. Use only genuine power steering fluid. I think it still has a leak on the rack and pinion system. This is the part of the video where I'm gonna go ahead and say don't do what I do. You should never ever try and start a car up on jack sands with uh, covers and the wheel off. It's unsafe. I've been doing this for years. I have experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have experience with unsafe. Was. That rack has been leaking. The old owner put antifreeze in there instead of power steering fluid. 